Having finished up the blacksmith side of the diorama, this week I started working on the expansion area for the farm. As usual, I began by working on the largest element first for this section, which is a windmill for crushing grain grown here at the farm. There are many different types of windmills in the olden days. The type I wanted to build is called the post mill, which is one of the earliest types widely adopted throughout Europe. The type of traditional European windmill most people think of is the more advanced tower mill, which are usually built from stone in the shape of a circular tower. However, post mills were built from wood. It was cheaper to build and being wooden, it wasn't as durable as tower mills, therefore very few survived to today. I think this cheaper type of windmill is more suitable for this lower income farming family. However, with this many farm animals and a windmill, this family is starting to look pretty well off. Nice to see the progression of their wealth status throughout this build series. Post mills basically were square wooden buildings standing on a central column. They also rotated around this single column. The column was in turn supported by four diagonal wooden struts. The supporting struts usually were entire tree trunks depending on the size of the windmill. Therefore, I made the struts to be roughly the same width as the tree trunks found in the forest section of this diorama. The central column usually had rocks piled up on them for increased stability as represented here. Having access to a blacksmith nearby, this windmill uses a lot of iron joinery represented by the dark bluish gray bar and clip pieces. Post mills are tall structures, so I created a long shaft section which spins the grinder. And I supported this shaft section with girder pieces to represent the central core structure of this windmill. As mentioned, post mills were purely wooden structures. So for the outer walls, I went with the same log build with horizontal bracing technique as with the stables. Early generations of post mills had handlebars that either humans or horses pulled, depending on the size of the windmill to turn the windmill according to wind directions. Rear fins were developed later to automate this process. I made the two opposing walls removable as well as the central structure as demonstrated earlier for ease of access to all areas within the interior space.
The shaft of the vanes are connected to the central grinder shaft utilizing a step-down gearing system. This is to prevent the grinder from spinning too fast in high winds, which will result in the grain scattering everywhere. Windmills had wooden roofing since the straws of thatched roofing could interfere with the mechanical parts of the windmill. But I mixed in plenty of medium nougat parts into this roofing to create some correlation with the medium nougat thatched roofing of the farmhouse. The roof was designed to be removable like every other structure in this diorama. Here is a demonstration of how the windmill turns using horse power. Stairs are either attached to the windmill or fixed to the ground. I went with the detached type to avoid making the windmill structure too unstable. The slide next to the steps is to easily slide down the sacks of processed grains. Curiosity got the best of me, so I had to try this. I know you guys had the same question on your mind as well. Having finished the windmill, I could now plan out the surrounding terrain. The windmill had to be built on a hill to maximize wind capture. And I decided to place it on the front corner to create a diagonal formation of buildings lining this diorama. I also had other plans for this expansion area and to fit it all in, the windmill would have to sit right in the corner of this section to maximize usable space. Creating the windmill took up the entire week, so pathing, contouring and other details will have to be done next week. Here we have a scene of other family members utilizing the windmill. And yes, this windmill is turned using the very high-tech carrot-on-a-stick method. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.